month, children all across America are going back to school, which means that all across America, teenagers are signing up for SAT prep classes. Kids take the SATs because they're an effective way to measure academic ability, except what if they're not? What if that's not what they were designed to do at all? Let me explain in a segment called, How Did We Get Here? There are a few things that every American high school student can count on experiencing. Algebra, acne, and filling in tiny bubbles. But standardized testing wasn't always a part of American education. In fact, just like your favorite thrift store jacket, standardized testing started out in the military. In 1917, a group of psychologists created an entrance exam for the U.S. Army. It was given to new recruits, and the purpose was to separate those who were mentally superior from those who were mentally inferior. Kind of like what you do when you look at Tinder, Tinder profiles. <laughs> I know, I'm not looking, I'm not looking at Tinder. I don't know. You tell me, probably. A few years later, a psychologist named Carl Brigham, seen here right after becoming haunted, published a study analyzing the results of those tests. He announced that black people had scored the lowest. He claimed American education was declining and he blamed that on the intermixing of black and white people. He said, the decline of American intelligence will be more rapid than the decline of the intelligence of European national groups owing to the presence here of the Negro. What I'm saying is he sounds like a really fun guy. Now, <laughs> I guess it is possible that black recruits actually did worse on that man's made up test, but here's the thing. When a bunch of white people design a test around the things they know, then they are by definition designing a test that white people will do better on because every test is biased toward the people who create it. If Sir Mix-a-Lot creates a test about which types of butts are best, you know the answer is gonna be big. <laughs> Our haunted friend Carl here created a biased test. But when he said that his test proved that black people were inferior, white people were ready to listen. And when immigrants started showing up in the US in greater numbers in the early 1900s, the people in charge of immigration got a great idea. They decided to use these new intelligence tests to choose who could enter the US and who couldn't. Sort of like a racist bouncer, they were used to prove that non-white people were at the lower end of the racial, ethnic, and cultural spectrum. And they weren't just written in a biased way, they were also written in English, which many immigrants didn't speak fluently. Can you imagine trying to take a test in English when you don't speak English? That's like me trying to watch a telenovela. I don't understand what's happening. I just understand that the stakes are very high. As these intelligence tests became more widespread, white supremacists started using them for more than just the military or immigration. They started using them as a scientific sounding way to justify segregation. And even as a way to justify forced sterilization of people of color and people who were intellectually disabled. Now that is a very heavy piece of information. So let's just take a moment and reset with a picture of two animals hugging. There we go. All right, you fell for it. Now, <laughs> what does all of this have to do with the SATs? Well, at the height of the Jim Crow era, white schools were looking for new and exciting ways to keep black students out. And in the 1920s, they said, oh, you know who we should call? Haunted Carl. <laughs> America's College Board asked Carl to create something called the Scholastic Aptitude Test, or the SAT, that they could use to eliminate undesirable applicants. And Carl said, stand back. I've been training for this my whole life. <laughs> Harvard was the first school to require all students to take the SAT, so I don't know how to break this to you, but... <laughs> Some racist stuff happened at Harvard! <laughs> The test was such a hit, other colleges started using it, and by the mid-1900s, standardized testing was widespread, creating an even larger disparity in access to education. These tests became a barrier to knowledge and generational wealth for many American families of color, because that was precisely what it was designed to do. For instance, 
SAT designers used old test questions to design questions for next year's exam. Old questions were deemed good questions if black and Latinx students scored lower than their white peers. So if white students did well on a question, it would be moved to the new test, centering the test around their knowledge base. Basically, the old test was right in the new test, like this. See, there you go. (laughs) And I'm not just talking about how they made the test in olden times. On the October 1998 SAT, white students scored higher than black students on every single one of the 138 questions. Every single one. They could have saved some time and just had one question. Are you white? Yes, you get a 1600. Now, many people have asked, how can we make a test that is more accessible to students of different racial and ethnic backgrounds? But as we send our kids back to school this month, maybe the question is, Why are we using standardized tests at all? Because the goal of these tests was never education. It was always exclusion. And that fact is haunting, which I guess explains Carl's face. This has been How Did We Get Here? 